فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد وان اكسبلنيشن اوف ذا كتاب التبيان في اداب حمله القران ريتن باي العلامه الامام المجتهد محيي الدين ابي زكريا يحيى بن شرف النووي رحمه الله تعالى We spoke previously about sujood tilawa and inshallah ta'ala today we're going to be doing fi bayani adad sajadat sajadat the number of prostrations there are wa mahalliha and its place where is it located naam section regarding the number of prostrations and their locations Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah and the vast majority of scholars have stated that there are 14 prostrations in the Quran located in Surah Al-A'raf, Ra'ad, and Nahal, Al-Isra, Maryam, two prostrations in Al-Hajj, Al-Furqan, Al-Namal, Al-Sajda, Fusilat, Al-Najm, Al-Ishiqaq, and Al-Alam. Here the Shaykh, the Imam Al-Nawawi rahimahullah, here the Imam Al-Nawawi rahimahullah, he talks about the adad, the amount of prostrations there are in the Quran. When you read them, one can prostrate. He says, Fal or the chosen opinion, الذي قاله الشافعي, which Imam Shafi'i said, Wal Jamahir, and the overwhelming majority of the scholars is Annaha Arba Asharata Sajda, that is 14 prostrations. And then Imam al know what he did was, he mentioned the list of each prostration where it's located at. So the first one he said is in Surah Al-A'raf, and then Surah Al-Ra'd, Al-Nahl, Subhana, which is Surah Al-Isra, Maryam, Hajj, which is two, Furqan, Al-Naml, Alif Lam Mim Tanzil, Ham Mim Sajda, Wal Najm, Ida Sama Unshakat, and Iqra Bismi Rabbika Alladhi Khalaq. Now what he does is that he mentions the ruling pertaining to those ones. Naam. The prostration located in Surah Al-Sa'd is not regarded. Surah to? Surah Al-Sa'd is not regarded as firmly recommended as Al-Bukhari narrated that Ibn Abbas radiAllahu anhu said the prostration in Surah Al-Sa'd is not firmly recommended. But I have seen the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prostrating after reciting the verse of prostration in it. This is according to the school of thought of Imam Shafi'i as well as other scholars. So here the author rahimahullah, Imam Nawawi rahimahullah. He talks about um, Sajda to Saad. Sajda to As-Saad. He said, فَمُسْتَحَبَّةٌ It's recommended وَلَيْسَتْ مِنْ عَزَائِمِ السُّجُودِ ما معنى عَزَائِمِ السُّجُودِ It is not from the highly emphasized prostration. The rest are. But Saad is not. And the evidence for that is that which Al-Imam Al-Bukhari narrated in his Sahih Hadith number 1069. And Imam al-Bukhari narrated that Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he said, Saad laysat min azaim al-sujood, that it's not from the emphasized prostration. وَقَدْ رَأَيْتُ النَّبِيَّ I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam يَسْجُدُ فِيهَا prostrating in it, meaning you're allowed to prostrate. But is it from the uh, emphasized sujood? He said, no. Who's saying this? Al-Imam al-Nawawi. And this is the madhab held by Al-Imam al-Shafi'i. And he use, he's using the statement of Ibn Abbas, who also said uh, that Saad laysat min azaim al-sujood. Naam. Abu Hanifa also stated that there are 14 prostrations in the Quran, but he excluded the second prostration in Surah Al-Hajj and affirmed the one in Saad, considering it among the firmly recommended prostrations. Naam. He, uh, Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, he accepted that it's 14. Just like the Jam Jamahir al-Ulama, he accepted that. But the difference here is, is that he doesn't agree that there is two sajda in, su in Surah Al-Hajj. He just believes that there is one 
And the second difference that he has with the Jumhur is that he believes the sajda in Surah Al-Sad is min azaim sujood. It is from the emphasized prostration. Whereas the Jumhur don't believe that. Lam Imam Shafi'i Imam Ahmed also stated that there are 14 prostrations, but in another narration stated there were 15, including the one in Sa'd. This is also the opinion of Abu Abbas, Ibn Siraj, and Abu Ibn Suraj. Ibn Suraj and Abu Ishaq al Marwazi. Al Abu Ishaq al Marwazi. Al Marwazi, you know. Who were all among the companions of Imam Shafi'i. Abu Abbas ibn Suraj, he's a man who he's called Naqal. Abu Abbas ibn Suraj is called a Naqal. Do you know what Naqal means? Naqal is the one who transmits something. And the reason why he was called a transmitter is because he transmitted the Kitab al Risal of Imam Shafi'i. He took it to Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi. When Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi requested from Shafi'i to write Kitab al Risala, as the poet said, وَأَوَّلُ مَنْ أَلَّفَ فِي الْكُتْبِ مُحَمَّدِ ibn Shafi'i الْمُطَّلِبِ وَغَيْرُهُ كَانَ لَهُ سَلِيقَةً مِثْلُ الَّذِي لِلْعُرْبِ مِنْ خَلِيقَةً That Imam Shafi'i was the first person to write in this field of usul al-fiqh, صح? Who was it? Imam Shafi'i. And he wrote it with the request of who? Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi. Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi requested from Shafi'i to write Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi requested from Shafi'i to write in the field of usul al-fiqh. Shafi'i came and he authored this book, Al-Risala. When he wrote this Kitab al-Risala, he wanted to send it to Abdurrahman ibn Mahdi to check it out. Abdurrahman ibn Mahdi, uh, it was sent to him through Abil Abbas ibn, uh, ibn Suraj. He's the one who took the papers from Imam Shafi'i and he took it to Abdurrahman ibn Mahdi. And many people don't know, but the Kitab al-Risala, the one we have is a second version. The first version we don't have. There's two versions. So he's from the students of Imam Shafi'i. And Abi Ishaq Al Maruzi, Abu Al Marwazi, both ways the scholars try to say it. He's Min Ashabi Shafi'i. When you hear this word, Min Ashabi, Ashab means student. The word Ashab means student generally. So Al Imam Ahmed has two riwayah. One riwayah is that, that the sajidat, sajid, the sajidat are according to what Shafi'i said. 14 and Surah Al-Sad laysat min azaim al-sujood. That's one call Imam Ahmed holds. The second view that Imam Ahmed rahimahullah holds is that it is 15 sujoods. He increased Surah Al-Sad in there. And this is, not, this is also a view held by the students of Shafi'i. Abu Abbas ibn Suraj, Abu Ishaq al-Marwazi, who are from the students of Shafi'i, they held that opinion with Imam Ahmed. Naam. Imam Malik is reported to have held two opinions on this, one of which agrees with that of Imam Shafi'i. So Imam Malik, rahimahullah, Imam Dad al Malik ibn Anas. Uh, Imam Malik, he was Asbahi. That's the tribe of the people he was from. And Imam Zuhri used to say that he was from, he's from the tribe Al-Asbah, from the angle of slavery. And Imam Malik used to hate that. He used to get upset because he wasn't. He never ever went through slavery, nor did he, any of his family lineage ever go through it. And then he used to say, Laytahu lam yarwi anna. I just wish that Zuhri never narrated from us. Because he wouldn't have said that about us. <laughs> well, the Shaykh, that's his own teacher. And Imam Malik, rahimahullah, riwayat. And Imam Malik, by the way, many people don't know, but his mom, mother was pregnant for him four years. He was in the womb of his mother for four years. The scholars have unanimously agreed upon that in the, in the, in the writing of his biography. He has two opinions on Imam Malik, rahimahullah. Ihdahuma, the first one is Kakoli Shafi'i, like the view of Imam Shafi'i. But the most famous view that Malik is Ihda Ashara, 11. So he dropped Al Hajj, Al Najm, and Ida Sama Al Shakat, Al Iqra. And this is a view held by Shafi'i in his old opinion. This is Qawlu Al-Qadim of Imam Shafi'i. Sah? And what did we say? Imam Shafi'i is Qawlu Al-Qadim. How do we determine that is something is Qawlu Al-Qadim? And if Imam, if Imam, if Imam Ahmed narrates that opinion from him. Who else? Abu Thawr. Who else? Hasan bin Muhammad al-Sadiq al-Za'farani. 
If he narrates from Shafi'i as well, Hadaqul al Qadim. Zahfarani was the one who used to read Imam, Imam Shafi'i, remember? You know, everyone is, like he's a career reads now. Yeah, Abu Bakr is reading now. And Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah, the one who used to read for him, when he used to explain, was that Al Zahfarani used to do it when he was in Iraq. So if he narrates something from Shafi'i, he is what? Qawl al Qadim. Like if, if Al Rabi' ibn Sulaiman al Muradi or Ya'qub ibn Buayti, uh, uh, rahimahullah, or Yahya ibn Ismail al Muzani, or uh, if they narrate from him, this is the Qawl al Jadid, this is Egypt. Naam. One of which agrees with that of Imam Shafi'i in that there are 14 prostrations, but in another narration he was stated as saying that there are only 11 prostrations and, ex- and excluding those in Al-Najm, Al-Shifaq and Al-Alam. Even though he said, وَهُوَ قَوْلُ الْقَدِيمَ لِلْشَافِعِي There is a difference between Imam Shafi'i's قَوْلُ الْقَدِيمَ and Imam Malik's view here. Now we didn't go too much into tafasil or details into that. He didn't go into too much details regarding that. But there is slight difference there if you want. You can go to the kitab At-Tamheed Ibn Abdul Barr Rahimahu Allah Ta'ala al Muwahib Al-Jaleel This is a formal opinion of Imam Shafi'i but the correct opinion is the one previously mentioned that the the authentic traditions of the Prophet indicate the specific locations are as follows. The, so the strongest opinion is that which we have previously mentioned, he said. Because the ahadiths that are authentically transmitted from the Prophet I said, I show that. Naam. So now he just goes into the list. So we're just going to listen to, inshallah ta'ala, um, Abu Bakr reading the list of where it's, where it's located, inshallah. Naam. Number one. Surah Al-A'raf at the end of the surah. Number two, Surah Al-Ra'ad after the verse ending with in the morning and evening, i.e. verse 15. Number three, Surah Al-Nahl after the verse ending with and they do what they are ordered to do, verse 15. Number four, Surah Al-Isra after the verse ending with and it increases them in humility before Allah, which is verse 109. Number five, Surah Al-Maryam after the verse ending with they fall prostrating and crying, verse 58. Number six, Surah Al-Hajj, after the verse ending with, Allah does what He wills, which is verse 18. Number seven, Al-Hajj, after the verse ending with, and do good so that you may be successful, which is verse 77. Surah Al-Furqan, after the verse ending with, and increase them only in aversion, which is verse 60. Number nine, Surah Al-Naml, after the verse ending with, Lord of the Throne of Glory, which is verse 26. Number 10, a sajda after the verse ending with, and they are not arrogant, which is verse 15. In Fusilat, after the verse ending, and they never tire, which is verse 38. Number 12, Surah Al Najm, at the end of the chapter. And number 13, Al Inchiqab, after the verse, they fall not in prostration, which is verse 21. And Surah Al Arab, at the end of the chapter. There is no disagreement regarding the location of the prostrations within, within the chapters mentioned, except with regards to Fusilat. Imam Shafi'i, his companion Sa'id ibn Musayyib, Muhammad ibn Sirin, Muhammad ibn Sirin, Abu Wa'lid, Shaqib ibn Salama, Sufyan al Thawri, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Ahmed, Ishaq ibn Rawayha, Ishaq ibn Rahawiya. Ishaq ibn Rahawiya. Two ways you can say his name. You can say Ishaq ibn Rahawiya or Rahawiyya ala Sibawiyya, صح? That's the problem with English, isn't it? That's why I said it's... Yeah. Are all of the opinion that the prostration in Fusilat is after verse 38? All of those, that's the opinion they hold, hey? Ibn Mundir stated that Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu is of the opinion that it is after verse 37. Umar ibn Khattab? Ibn Mundir stated what? That the opinion that it is after verse 37. Okay. Other sharing this opinion are Al Hassan al Basri, the companions of Abu Allah ibn Mas'ud, Ibrahim al Nafari, Ibrahim al Nafari, Abu Salih, Talha ibn Talha ibn Muswarif. Talha ibn Musarrif. Musarrif. What did he say? Muswarif. Mus? Warif, the W. A'udhu billah. Zubayr ibn al Harith, Imam Malik. Al-Layth ibn Sa'ad. Al-Baghawi states in At-Tadhib that some of the companions of Imam Shafi'i will this opinion. In? At-Tadhib. In Tahdib. 
Tahdeeb. Tahdeeb is another book. It's Tahdeeb. What does it say in English? T-A-H-D-Z. Yes, it's Tahdeeb, you're wrong. Okay, it says Tahdeeb, they're right. The hat came first. Are you? That some of the companions of the Imam Shafi also hold this opinion. Sah? In his book, Al-Kifaya, Abu Hassan Abu Hassan Ali ibn Abi Sa'ad al-Abdari. Al-Abdari. Al-Abdari, one of our companions, relates that Shafi'i scholars have disagreed on the frustration in Al-Namad, further claiming that the majority of jurists were of the opinion that it is on verse 25, and that Malik is, and that Imam Malik is on the opinion that it is on verse 26. This claim, however, is neither known or nor acceptable. Indeed, it is a plain error, and the books of Shafi'i scholars are clear in stating that the frustration in this chapter falls after verse 26, where Allah says, Lord of the throne of glory, and Allah knows best. فصل في شروط صحة سجود التلاوة حكم السجود التلاوة حكم صلاة النافلة في اشتراط الطهارة عن الحدث والنجس وفي استقبال القبلة وستر العورة فيحرم على من فيحرم على من على فيحرم على من على بدنه فيحرم على من على أسعجيب فيحرم على من على بدنه أو ثوبه نجاسة غير معف غير معفو عنها وعلى المحدث إلا إذا تيمم في موضع يجوز فيه التيمم ويحرم إلى غير القبلة إلا في السفر حيث تجوز النافلة إلى غير القبلة وهذا كله متفق عليه Section. Rulings that apply to, to non obligatory prayers also apply to prostrating in, in recitation with regards to being in a state of ritual with regards to being in a state of ritual purity, being free of impurities, facing the qibla and covering the necessary body parts. The author Rahimullah now he goes into the issue of when you are reading the Quran and you come to a verse and in that verse it's a verse of prostration. Do you have to be in a state of purity? You have to be upon state of tahara. I'm reading the Quran, I come across a verse where I, I prostrate. Do I have to be in state of purity? Or do I don't have to? The Shaykh Rahimullah says, Hukmu sujood tilawa, hukmu salat nafila. It's like the ruling of a, a voluntary prayer. In other words, ishtirat tahara. Purity is a condition. You have to be in a state of purity, saying. From what lacking? Anil hadati, from minor impurity. When najasi, and you have to be clean, your clothes have to be clean, and the place you're doing prostration has to be clean. You have to face the qibla, you have to cover your aura. Now. Prostration for one who has an inexcusable quantity of impurities on either his body or clothes is prohibited. It is also prohibited for those in a state of ritual impurity who are unable to find water unless they are able to perform tayyum. So if the person's clothes is impure, they also are not allowed to. If their body has impurity on it, they are also not allowed to prostrate. He's also saying وَعَنِ muhditi. If the person is in a state of impurity, he can't find water, he has to do tayyum. Just like a prayer. Meaning everything applies here, he's saying. And it is not permissible to face other than the qibla unless one is struggling. So again, in the voluntary prayer, does, is a person who's a traveler, can he face other than the qibla? If the person is the, yes. So if the prayer isn't wajib, if the prayer isn't wajib and you're a traveler, the, the sunnah is that you can face other than the qibla. The Prophet used to do that. Okay, he's saying that this is the same as well. Are you? These are all agreed upon matters. So here he's saying is ijma'ah. It's narrated by any if you it's, it's all spoken about in his majmu'ah. Fasl fi hukm al sujood fi al salat li ghayr al azaim idha qara'a sajdat sad faman qala innaha min azaim al sujood qala yasjud sawa'un qara'aha sawa'un qara'aha fi al salat aw kharijan minha ka sa'ir al sajdat 
وأما الشافعي وغيره ممن قال ليست من عزائم السجود فقالوا إذا قرأها خارج الصلاة استحب له سجود استحب له السجود لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سجد فيها كما قدمناه وإن قرأها في الصلاة لم يسجد فإن سجد وهو جاهل أو ناس لم تبطل لم تب لم تبطل صلاته ولكن يسجد للسهو وإن كان عالما فالصحيح أنه تبطل صلاته لأنه زاد في الصلاة ما ليس منها فبطلت كما لو سجد للشكر فإنه تبطل صلاته بلا خلاف والثاني لا والثاني لا تبطل لأن لأن له تعلقا بالصلاة ولو سجد إمامه في صاد لكونه يعتقدها من العزائم والمأموم لا يعتقدها فلا يتابعه بل يفارقه بل يفارقه أو ينتظره قائما فإذا انتظره هل يسجد للسهو فيه وجهان الأظهر لا يسجد سكشن the ruling regarding the frustration in Saad. So now this quote, he's going to go into Saad is from the prostration that we said is not from the what? It's not on the emphasized. It's not, on a, it's not from the azai sujood, right? So what's the ruling pertaining to prostrating in Saad? He says here. Those of the opinion that this prostration is strongly recommended state that one should prostrate after reciting the verse, whether during prayers or outside of that. So the first opinion were those who said is what? That is recommended, that is emphasized on. Those ones are one view of those scholars. So إِذَا قَرَأَ السَّعَادِ فَمَنْ قَالَ إِنَّهَا مِنْ عَزَائِمِ السُّجُودِ قَالَ يَسْجُودِ So the ones who said that it is from the emphasized prostrations, then they said he's going to prostrate. He's going to prostrate. Whether he's in the prayer or whether he's outside the prayer, he's going to prostrate. Just like he prostrates in the other prostrations that are in the Qur'an. As for the ones who said, no, it's not from the Aza'imu Sujood. It is not from the emphasized prostration Saad. What happens regarding this? Like Imam Jafi'i and others. Those who believe that it is not of the strongly recommended prostration, such as Imam Shafi'i as well as others, state that it is recommended to prostrate only if the recitation is taking place outside of prayers, and that one should not prostrate if reciting during prayers. So look at it. They say, the Shafi'i and others, who say that Saad is not min azaim is sujood It is not from the emphasized prostration because they said that لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم Sorry, they said إذا قرأها خارج الصلاة If he reads it outside the prayer So he's reading it on a normal time where he's not praying he, They say that it's تحب له sujood It's recommended that he prostrates now because the Prophet ﷺ prostrated Like if he reads it whilst in the prayer then he's not, he's not going to prostrate. He's not going to? He's not going to prostrate. Hey, yeah. If, however, one prostrates out of ignorance or forgetfulness. So now they're talking about, so is he, does he prostrate in the prayer? Saad, according to Shafi'i and his opinion? No he, they, they, no, he doesn't. Well, what about if he does? Out of ignorance, he didn't know the ruling. Or he prostrates out of forgetfulness. What happens in this situation, hey? His prayer is still valid, but should prostrate after completing his prayers or forgetting. They say, Lam taptu salatu. Salah is not null and void. But, yes, judu li sahwi. He does sujudu sahwi. Just like he forgot a, something in the salah, he would have to do sujudu sahwi. That's what they say. That's if, he's out, if he does it out of forgetfulness or ignorance. And if he does it out of ignorance, then he wouldn't even know. So we'll just carry on like that. But if he does it out of forgetfulness, then he would have to. You should do this when he remembers. If, however, the reciter knows that he should not, that he should not prostrate, yet does, his prayer is invalidated according to the more correct opinion, since he has added to the prayer that which is not of it. This is similar to invalidating the prayer by prostrating with the intention of giving thanks. So exactly, they say it's the same. What if a person says in the middle of the prayer, I'm just going to do the do shukri. I'm going to do the prostration of shukri. Can you do that? They said it's the same. Who, who allowed you to do this now? Your salah is null and void. You added something to the prayer which is not from it. That's what they say. Are you with me? 
others on the other hand have stated that the prayer is still valid as the prostration in Saad is still, con is still connected to the prayer. Others have said, no, 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 no. They know that his salah la tuqtul. Li'anna lahu ta'alluqan bis salah. It's connected to prayer. It's actually connected to the... It's connected to prayer. Naam. If one prays behind an imam, he is of the opinion. So now he's going to tell you, it's two people. You're of the opinion of Imam Shafi'i and others, which is that Saad is not min azai mis sujood. That's your opinion. You hold that's not emphasized on. But there's an Imam in front of you who holds the opinion that it is from the Aza'im or Sujood, such as his Hanafi Methalan. And he goes down. What do you do? You're Shafi'i. This is your opinion. How do you reconcile between the two? He said, Look. If one prays behind an Imam who is of the opinion that the prostration in Saad is firmly recommended, he should not prostrate with him and instead should separate from him or stand and wait for him to stand up again. This is what he does. He just stands where in this position he is. Upon doing so, one does not have to make sujood the sahwi after prayer according to the more correct of the two opinions on this matter. So since you didn't follow the Imam, would you have to come with sujood the sahwi? He said there are opinions in within the Shafi'i Madhab, but he said al adhar la yasjud. But what's apparent is that he doesn't have to prostrate. He doesn't have to prostrate. Ibn Hajar rahimahullah, Ibn Hajar al-Haythimi rahimahullah in his Tuhfat al-Muhtaj, he goes in more details. You can see more there, inshaAllah ta'ala. We're not doing too much ta'liqat and tar tarjihat on the book. This is a madhab, so it's just, an, just going over it. Murur al-Kiram. فصل في من يسن له السجود اعلم انه يسن للقارئ المتطهر بالماء او التراب حيث يجوز سواء كان في الصلاة او خارجا منها ويسن للمستمع ويسن ايضا للسامع غير المستمع ولكن قال الشافعي رحمه الله لا اؤكده في حقي كما اؤكده في حق المستمع هذا قول صحيح وقال امام الحرمين من اصحابنا لا يسجد السامع والمشهور الأول وسواء كان القارئ في الصلاة أو خارجا منها يسن للمستمع والسامع السجود وسواء سجد القارئ أم لا هذا هو الصحيح المشهور عند أصحاب الشافعي رضي الله عنه وبه قال أبو حنيفة رضي الله عنه وقال صاحب البيان من أصحاب الشافعي صاحب البيان هي إذا العمراني رحمه الله تعالى because that's the Sharh of the Kitab of what? Sharh of the Kitab of al muhaddab by Ishaq al-Shirazi. He was before Nawawi. لا يسجد المستمع لقراءة من قرأ في الصلاة وقال الصيدلاني من أصحاب الشافعي لا يسن السجود إلا أن يسجد القارئ والصواب الأول ولا فرق بين أن يكون القارئ مسلما بالغا متطاهرا رجلا وبين أن يكون كافرا أو صبيا أو محدثا أو امرا هذا هو الصحيح عندنا وبه قال أبو حنيفة وقال بعض أصحابنا لا يسجد لقراءة الكافر والصبي والمحدث والسكران لا يسجد لقراءة الكافر والصبي والمحدث, والمحدث السكران وقال جماعة من السلف لا يسجد لقراءة المرأة حكاه, حكاه ابن المنذر عن قتادة ومالك وإسحاق والصواب ما قدمنا فصل في اختصار السجود وهو أن يقرأ آية أو آيتين ثم يسجد حكاه ابن المنذر عن الشعب والحسن البصري ومحمد بن سيرين والنخعي وأحمد وإسحاق أنهم كرهوا ذلك وعن أبي حنيفة ومحمد بن الحسن وأبي ثور أنه لا بأس به وهذا مقتضى مذهبنا فصل في أحكام تتعلق بسجود التلاوة في الصلاة إذا كان مصليا منفردا سجد لقراءة نفسه فلو ترك سجود التلاوة وركع ثم أراد أن يسجد للتلاوة لم يجز فإن فعل مع العلم بطلت صلاته وإن كان قد هوى إلى الركوع ولم يصل إلى حد الراكعين جاز أن يسجد للتلاوة ولو هوى لسجود التلاوة ثم بدا له ورجع إلى القيام جاز أما إذا أصغى المنفرد بالصلاة لقراءة قارئ في الصلاة أو غيرها فلا يجوز له أن يسجد 
ولو سجد مع العلم بطلت صلاته أما المصلي أما المصلي في جماعة فإن كان إماما فهو كالمنفرد وإذا سجد الإمام للتلاوة نفسه وجب على المأموم أن يسجد معه فإن لم يفعل بطلت صلاته فإن لم يسجد الإمام لم يجز للمأموم فإن سجد بطلت صلاته ولكن يستحب أن يسجد إذا فرغ من الصلاة ولا يتأكد ولو سجد الإمام ولم يعلم المأموم حتى رفع الإمام رأسه من السجود فهو معذور في تخلفه ولا يجوز له أن يسجد ولو علم الإمام بعد في السجود وجب السجود فلو هوى إلى السجود فرفع الإمام وهو في الهوي وهو في الهوي you can say both ways رفع معه ولم 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 يجز ولم يجز السجود وكذا الضعيف الذي هوى مع الإمام إذا رفع الإمام قبل بلوغ الضعيف إلى السجود لسرعة الإمام وبطء المأموم يرجع معه ولا يسجد وأما إذا كان المصلي مأموما فلا يجوز أن يسجد لقراءة نفسه ولا لقراءة غير إمامه فإن سجد بطلت صلاته ويكره له قراءة السجدة ويكره له الإصغاء إلى قراءة غير إمامه So the author, rahimahullah, he talks about here, who is it recommended for them to do prostration? Naam. Prostration is recommended for every reciter in a state of ritual purity, whether by using water or sand, and whether in prayer or outside of that. It is also recommended for those listening, as well as those who simply hear the recitation without, without actively listening to it. So these are the people, he states, the people in which it is um, recommended for them to prostrate is number one al mutatahhiru bil ma'i aw turab the person who is in a state of purity through water or through sand or dust whether he's in state whether whether he's in a prayer or he's outside the prayer also it is recommended for who lil mustami'i the one who's listening to the recitation and it's also Recommended for the one who is what? Who's reciting. Now, Concerning this particular point, Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah said, I do not see it as being firmly recommended for one who hears the Quran as it is for the active listener. And this is the correct view. So here there's a mas'ala. You know the difference between hearing and listening, right? Hearing is when you're not intentionally trying to listen to something. So, listening, on the other hand, is when you're attentively trying to hear something. So they, the scholars differ between the one who hears and the one who listens. So the one who is mustami' is the one who intended to hear. So he's the listener, the mustami' Whereas the sami' is not, he didn't intend. Basically, he's the hearer. So Shafi'i rahimahullah, he says, لا أؤكد في حقه كما أؤكد في حق المستمعي. The one, who's, the one who I'm going to emphasize it for him, and I'm going to say that he should, that he should, what do you call it, prostrate, is the one who is listening, not the one who is hearing. Naam. That's what Shafi'i is saying. And لا أؤكد, I'm not going to emphasize it for, في حقه, uh, that Dhamir goes back to who? Who does that pronoun go back to? A Sami'i, the one who's hearing. I'm not going to emphasize it on for him. Kama akiduhu, the way I would emphasize it on to what? Fi haqil mustami'i. Mustami'i is the one who is, who hears it with an intention. Naam. Hada huwa sahih. That's the strongest. Hey? Imam al Haramain states that those who simply hear the Quran do not prostrate, but the first opinion is more popular. And Imam al Haramain, who's from the Shafi'i scholars, and I said to you before, he has a big book in the Madhab al Shafi'i, it's called Nihayatul Matlab fi Dirayatul Madhab. And you guys know who Imam al Haramain is, right? Abi Ma'ali al Juwaini, rahimahullah, the author of Al Warqat. 
He's called Imam al-Haramain because he used to lead in Haram al-Makki and Haram al-Madani. Both of them he used to lead the prayer. He said, La yajudu sami' The sami' who is the hearer, the one who's hearing, who's not intentionally listening, he doesn't have to prostrate. Or he doesn't prostrate. But Nawawi says, even that though Imam al-Haramain is from the Aymat al-Shafi'iyah, he says that his view is not the famous, well-known view in the madhab. The famous view is the view that Shafi'i put. Naam. It is also recommended for both those who hear the Quran and those actively listening to it to prostrate regardless of whether the reciter himself is in his prayers or outside of that, and regardless of whether he prostrates or not. This so that's, that's the... Uh, whether, so here it says, Whether the reciter is praying, or he is or he's not praying, it is recommended. The one who is listening, you see, the one who is hearing, sujood. Whether the reciter, whether the reciter prostrates or whether he doesn't prostrate. Naam. This is the correct and popular verdict among companions of Imam Shafi'i and Imam Abu Hanifa hold the same view. So here, an Imam Shafi'i's famous opinion that he holds, and it's the qawlu al-mashhur fi al-madhab. It's the well-known view in the madhab al-shafi'iyya, is this one that he just mentioned. And it's also the opinion held by Abu Hanifa radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, amma rahimahu allahu ta'ala. Naam. The author of Al-Bayan, who was among the companions of Imam, of Imam al-Shafi'i, stated in his book... Yeah, so this is Yahya al-Imrani. Are you with me, brothers? Yahya al-Imrani, who has a sharah on kitab Al-Muhadhab li-Abis Haq al-Shirazi, he has a sharah on it. Are you with me, brothers? He has a sharah on it, and he was before Imam al-Nawawi. And Imam al-Nawawi has a sharah on Al-Muhadhab li-Abis Haq al-Shirazi. He called Al-Majmu', right? Yahya al-Imrani has a sharh also on Muhaddab of Ishaq al-Shirazi. He called it al-Bayan. And now he transmits a lot of the statements of Yahya al-Imrani. And one of the things about this Imam Yahya al-Imrani is that you know a lot of the Shafi'iyah fell into Ash'ariyah in the Aqeedah. He wasn't like that, alhamdulillah. He has a book on Aqeedah where he talks about Aqeedah to Shafi'iyah and how it should be. So he's, he, did, he wasn't, he never fell short in regards to the Aqeedah of Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Naam. He stated in his book that the listener does not prostrate if the reciter is reciting in prayers. So he's saying that the mustabi' which is the one who's in listening, is actively listening, attentively. لا يسجد المستمع, he doesn't prostrate. لقراءة من قرأ في الصلاة لقراءة because of the recitation of the one who recites in the prayer. No. So now he's just trying to show you that within the Shafi'i there are many views. Are you with me? There are many views. As Sayyid Alani, another of Imam Shafi'i's companion, states that prostration is only recommended for the listener if the reciter prostrates, but the correct opinion is the one mentioned previously. No. Further, the above rulings apply whether the reciter is a Muslim or non Muslim, past puberty or prepubescent, male or female, and in a state of ritual purity or not. This is the correct view among us, and it is also the view of Imam Abu Hanifa. So here he says, all of this, if the reciter is a disbeliever, or, and he's reached age of puberty, or he's, pure, he's, he's in a state of purity, or if it's a man, or if it, it doesn't matter, whether it's a kafir, a child, one who's not in a state of purity, a woman, it does not matter, nothing changes. The hukums are still the same. That's the strongest opinion regarding the Shafi'i Madhab. وَبِهِ قَالَ أَبُوْ حَنِيفَ And Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, this is what he says. Naam. Some of our companions have stated that one should even prostrate to the recitations of non-Muslims, those who are prepubescent, those in a state of ritual impurity, and those who are drunk. Say that one more time. Some of our companions Aye. have stated that one should even prostrate. Should what? Should even prostrate. Look at that in translation now. What does it say in English, Abi? La <laughs> yasjud. Read it again one more time, let's just in case in case we might be wrong. Hey, Karen, read it again one more time. Some of our companions have 
companions have stated that one should even prostrate to the recitations of non-Muslims, those who are prepubescent, those in a state of ritual impurity, and those who are drunk. It's a mistake. Big mistake. Yeah. It's the opposite of what this book is saying. Yeah. Some among the pious predecessors... You know why it can't, be, it can't make sense? It's because you just previously mentioned yeah. prostrating for them. Yeah. Then why would you mention it again? Yeah? It's an issue here. Yeah. Some among the pious predecessors have also stated that one should not prostrate to the recitation of a woman. And Ibn Mundir reported that this was the view of Qatada, Malik, and Ishaq. So some of the Jama'at ibn Salaf, some of the Salaf said that a person should not prostrate to the recitation of a woman. If a woman recites, don't prostrate. Ibn al Mudir narrated that Qatada and Malik and Ishaq, and that's not a strong opinion. That's a weak opinion. The opinion that is right is that. Whoever reads, whoever they may be, you have to prostrate. We'll take a 10 minutes break, inshallah ta'ala.